This is Small Business Conversations with Akona Machoba, unlocking essential advice, opinions, and key issues that affect South Africa's small business community. Welcome to the latest edition of the Small Business Conversations podcast, Manweb's weekly SME show highlighting critical issues affecting South Africa's small business environment. Now, this week's episode, we are recording from the Vibe Township of Soweto, arguably one of the many centers of the booming township economy that I've come to know in the country. I had the pleasure of attending the Enterprise and Supplier Development Annual Business Summit hosted by African Bank at the iconic Maponya Mall. And on the sidelines of this event, I had the opportunity to speak to Fezi Lejamini, the CEO of Green Scooter, a South African startup focused on the design design, development and manufacturing of electric scooters. Here's how that conversation went. Fezile, thank you so much for joining me on the Small Business Conversations podcast. Um, I appreciate your time and I'd like to talk to you about your journey in the business of manufacturing electrical scooters. I believe you started in 2017. Um, is that correct? No, That's no, not no. correct? When no. did you start and can you just talk to us about your journey up until this point? No. Okay. So starting the business, I started the business in 20, as a concept, 28th of December, 2015, seeing a problem which was, oh my, am I getting off a taxi? And then having to walk home. Now with that, that's what you call the last mile. Then there's also the first mile. So let me ex- explain that briefly is that your first mile is, could be as a person, getting out your gate at home, walking to the nearest taxi rank. Your mid mile would be getting on that taxi that takes you to town, town takes you to close to your place of work. Your last mile is where your taxi would drop you off and then you walk to the destination, right? That's first mile, mid mile, last mile. So I had an issue with that where I'm trying to figure out how can I create something that will not become a me too company, but will become a company that adds value in people's lives and I can be able to build something that people will love. So that was literally it. If it was not for no mama learning I'm born. Uh, For me, I I always say that it was divine intervention because I had no interest in... I I mean, uh, obviously throughout the whole year, that year I was playing around with different, like toying around with ideas. But this is exactly what I'm doing. I never thought it would be something I would do. But I've fallen in love with it and I'm obsessed with it. You fall in love with it and you're obsessed with it. What has the reception been from those people that you're creating the solutions for? Yes, you mentioned the consumer aspect, but I also believe yeah. you have a business offering yeah. as well. What has the reception been like? So I mean, from a business perspective, everyone is blown away because it's like, oh, okay, I can actually, you know, make more, make more margins, save on costs, you know, uh, show that we are also decarbonizing our business, uh, show that we are also um, trying to support local, right? But, I mean, the most important thing is that for the people element, for people who look like me, there's some representation in an in a, in a, in a economic sector where there isn't anybody like me. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Right. But so, you know, I mean, yes, being young, I started this at the age of 26, 32 today. Seven years and nine months is not easy. Seven years and nine months of rejections. I mean, I just got another rejection on Monday for something else, you know. And I mean, we're, we're reaching 430 rejections uh, in the sense of inception, but those are the things that keep me going. And I think, you know, just as you saw, if you're inside uh, the tent, um, you know, um, saying things that resonate with people and, sh- and intentionally doing it and not just talking is, is, I think, what obviously just keeps me going. I think for me, the wow factor was the EV aspect of, of your design and the, the scooter that you're putting out there. And I'm just wondering on the capability side of things, what yeah. are the capability? What, um, how far can I go with the full charge? Yeah. How, just speak on, on the specs for me. So you've got two types of units, the ZV RS and the ZV Cargo. The ZV RS is the passenger version, one driver, two passengers. Then you have the ZV Cargo, which is um, uh, one driver and bin space at the back. You get a range of about uh, 80 to 100 kilometers from a single charge. But we're hoping to improve that. We're working on that. We also have another product that we're busy we're busy working on. And this product that we're working on is, uh, is going to be a next generation type of three-wheeler that will be able to uh, do a whole lot more, carry more goods. Um, you know, we're looking at we're having a payload. Currently, it's 450. We're trying to move to 700. So we're trying to build a product that is scientifically beautiful and defies physics in some way and um, range I'm hoping to 
also have something that will reach about 400 kilometers from a single charge. So there's a lot of things that we're doing. And it's not just the three wheelers. There's battery tech I'm busy with. There's uh, us providing services uh, to other people who are trying to build their own car companies or trying to build their own types of uh, products as well. I think um, what's interesting or maybe what I want to understand is the load shedding aspect. Yeah. That's a big problem, obviously, for the industry. Yeah. And um, sustaining this industry. Yeah. How are people finding that balance? How are you as Green School to trying to, to strike that balance or kind of mitigate the impact of load shedding? Is there any innovations that you're coming up with that's going to assist your customers keeping the, the, the scooters running? So we, all, we do provide consultancy where we advise on, like, you know, with the clients that do have money, it's, more, it's always the B2Bs uh, in terms of uh, erecting sustainable charging infrastructure. So that's what we're doing there. Uh, but there are, you know, storage types of units that we're working on as well uh, that we are hoping that we'll be able to roll out uh, over time. Uh, and yes, I mean, look, load shedding is, a big, is the biggest factor that changes decision making because as well, there's a lot of misinformation, not enough education as well for people to understand what we can do for them. And even like from a financing perspective, there is a bit of a, a disconnect as well with people understanding holistically what the whole thing can look like. So with this next product that we're building, they will have its whole uh, integration of uh, solar PVs on the panels themselves. But it doesn't say that the whole vehicle could run on it all the time because it will only be able to, to cater to X, X proportion as opposed to the full thing. Yeah, look, well, we're building a, we're building a, we're building a company uh, in an environment that is, yeah, literally punching in every every time we try to get up. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think every small business will feel that way, and that we've had many conversations around that on the podcast around how people are just trying to innovate on the goal just to create solutions yeah. that are going to help them through. And I'm just wondering, in the cost aspect of this, that if you're going to have a solar PV on, not on, but in. In the in, integrated into the the, uh, the 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 materials of mm -hmm. the panels. How does that affect the cost? It makes it more expensive, but the reality is, people need to understand total cost of ownership. So the total cost of ownership of buying a VW Polo versus this next gen product, how is worth out much less as opposed to the other? Because you've got a depreciating a depreciating asset that you have to replace every single thing, every single particular period. Whereas with the other. It's going to be an asset that will appreciate in value because you won't, you won't be changing or swapping and, and needing to do all these other things uh, as frequent. So it's the not enough information being out there about electric vehicles in general. You know, so it's not just us I'm going to talk about. I'll just talk about EVs in general. You know, there's a lot of things that, um, you know, maybe someone, someone needs to host an imbezo of sort and actually explain the different parts of this entire ecosystem. Uh, sticking to the cost aspect as well, I mean, for someone who wants to or want to be a green scooters, what, uh, what are the, are the, are the cost implications for them? How are they um, owning one? Are they able to own one? How does that work? So our unit economics as a business is, is that you can uh, buy, right? You can buy the vehicles. Two, you can also lease. Leasing means you can pay over a 36 month period. And the asset obviously will not be in your name, right? Shop. And then the second, the third part would be lease to buy. So lease to buy, shorter period, but at the end of the term, 24 months, the asset then, you know, you just have to pay the final uh, difference or whatever it is that was agreed upon, uh, which will never be something more than five, five or seven or eight K, never even more than that. Cause it's all about final service transfer of the asset and then it's yours. Mm -hmm. And that we're doing it like we're doing lease to buy because we know the issues with, with banks. Banks have an issue where how their algorithmic systems work for credit uh, to grant that credit is got is very very strict so it's it's not inclusive so the only way we can make our product accessible to all is lease to buy and which works exactly the same way as a vehicle asset finance model but ours is just much more affordable for them in space would you then say that the green scooter model that you are working on and building right now kind of gives a foundation for the establishment or creation of an affordable EV um, um, vehicle for yeah. the ordinary man and woman on the street because we know now even though we have the fancy Teslas everyone is trying to get them into your ordinary forms in order to drive greater impact. I think China has done quite a bit 
in that space where they are creating nice models that are affordable and people can, every ordinary person can own. We are a different type of benchmark. So I hope with time, as we master everything that we've been planning, that it, it gets identified as that. So, you know, I am trying to create the golden standard or the lithium standard, but you know, the most important thing is um, no one truly has, has a jet except for Tesla, I'll be honest with you. Uh, but we're trying to have it in our own way. And I mean, as much as people will look at cheaper uh, op options to import from the East, um, Zeros are not the best products because uh, we've seen with, with history of how they survive on our loads and our uh, environments. Mm -hmm. How far are we as South Africa to getting to that point where your ordinary man and woman is able to own one EV, that is, vehicle? Also, you need to, I mean, look, people can afford ours. If people want to buy it, they can. But first remember, we're in a country where the special plan, the special planning is the one that's also just not, not working. And if anyone else is trying to advocate for electric mobility, they, they're advocating to import products. So anyone, I, I literally just, I, I don't like entertaining conversations like that of, of importing products because it's creating no value. There's no enterprise value there for us. There's no social or economic value for us because then in the day, you support uh, establishing uh, assembly uh, facilities, SKD or CKD locally. What essentially happens, royalties are just paid out to Europe or paid out to, to, to Asia and they paid out to America. So uh, I just don't, I'm not, I'm not really certain now about, uh, you know, really, well, like how far are we? It's right now because there's different types of products available. There's still just a whole long way to go. There's still the infrastructure side of things. There's still the public policy that needs to be updated in the different um, subsectors within it. Yeah, uh, there's just a lot. Yeah, and I think another aspect of that would be the charging um, stations conversation. I think when we see uh, the conversation... The being done wrong at the moment. Why do you say that? Yeah. I can't tell you why, because then that's we're telling people what to fix. You need to tell us what to oh, fix. <laughs> then I'll have to charge a fold. <laughs> okay, you can keep um, your, <laughs> your, your, your cards close to your chest, but I think just commentary on... The, 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 the growth in charging stations is quite slow compared to other parts of the country, which I think is also a hindrance to, to the growth of um, more people getting um, EVs into their garages. For you to put together a green scooter, where do your parts have to travel to come? Well, they come from different parts of the world. I mean, it's just like any other uh, OEM. So you have suppliers, you have subcontractors. That's what we do, it's the, it's the nature of the game. Um, yeah, I can't really tell you specifically because that's also just, you know, telling you how we do business. Okay. And then do you have a manufacturing capability in South Africa? Yes, we do. We subcontract uh, some of our stuff, which makes it much more affordable for us at this juncture uh, to, to work. And there you have it, Fezi Lejamini of Green Scooter, letting us in on his thoughts on the future of EVs in the country and exactly the challenges the industry faces and how his startup is trying to address some of them. If you enjoyed this episode, download the Small Business Conversations podcast on all digital platforms and don't forget to share our episodes. If you want to contribute to the conversation, you can tweet me at machoba underscore A or you can email us at smepodcast at manweb.co.za to share your thoughts and suggestions for future conversations. Until next time, thank you and goodbye. You've been listening to Small Business Conversations with Akona Machoba. To listen to more MoneyWeb podcasts, go to moneyweb.co.za, the MoneyWeb app, or your favorite podcast platforms. MoneyWeb, your trusted source for business and investment insights.